What's popping, y'all? It's Deidre with One Shot Game. You already know what time it is. I'm back. And you know what the motto be. You get one shot at life, but a lifetime to learn all the game. So anyway, this video is just going to be a part two into my life and time period around the time I met Little Tim, a.k.a. Mozzie. But when I met him, he was Little Tim. So... Uh, this is this the back end, the side of the situation that is probably not explained so much because it's the part that people like to keep hidden. So if you noticed in my first video, I was talking about the glitz and the glam and the money and, you know, the high profile niggas I was meeting, getting introduced to, the things I was seeing, how life was like a movie, it was a blur, things was happening. I was meeting high rolling people. I was getting in, you feel me, certain situations that I was like, oh my goodness, I'd never seen this before. And being a good observationist, I was able to take in certain things from that lifestyle and period of my life that helped me ultimately make certain decisions to where you either want to be in that lifestyle or you don't. You got two choices. It's either yes or it's either no. You get what I'm saying? But anyway, back to... I talked about a lot of the good side to it, but this video is going to be on the downside to it, the bad side to it, the part that the people don't see because a lot of the times you have an image to obtain, you have a, you know, a status to uphold. So a lot of these men in this profession are looking good, looking nice, have the money, have the cars, have the clothes, but behind the scenes, growing up in that time, a lot of the women were suffering mentally Granted, of course, you know, the nice house look good, the the nice purses look nice, the clothes look nice, driving around in the car look nice. Of what you guys didn't see was the fact that even though the women had those things, they would barely have time to even enjoy it because they were constantly on the road all the time. Not only are you missing out on raising your kids because nine times out of ten they send the kids to a babysitter or to their mama house you missing out on their life the nice house the nice cars the nice clothes and all that you barely get to show it off because you're constantly on the road in these hotels constantly selling yourself around the clock so the only little bit of gap that you got to see in the lifestyle is when they would come home from a particular uh, vacation, as they call it, and spend a little bit of time at home. Now, due to the seriousness of the men that you chose to go up under their wing, a lot of them were hidden behind a lot of demons as well. And little Tim's uncle, the one I grew up around, he is something that I would call like a, a finesse gorilla pimp. <laughs> In case you don't know what that means, I'm about to tell you. Like, he was nice and sweet and cool on one side, but if the money got too slow or it wasn't coming in fast enough to probably hold, withhold his image he was trying to portray, that's when it got ugly. And again, in that lifestyle... It is a lot of sex involved. So the women were basically at any point reliable to do anything that the man said. Again, I'm not going to put nobody's names out there because I don't want this shit to come bite me back in the ass. But I remember one time I was sitting on the couch and I was watching TV and my guy mom and little Tim's uncle was sitting on the couch and sh he asked her, you feel me? He didn't ask her shit actually. He told her to suck his dick, you feel me? And in front of me as I'm sitting on the couch, you feel me? And she 
did it, but she was gagging and choking. And mind you, my godmom at the time, she didn't do any drugs or nothing like that, but she was living that lifestyle purely because of the love for another man. So I'm not going to just jump topics like that, but if you love somebody, sometimes you feel like, or majority of the time, you feel like what they ask you to do, you're liable to do because you love them. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't even know if it was love at that point, but or control. Who knows what it was? But when I seen that being done in front of my face, I'm 16 years old at the time. I'm seeing it being done in right in front of my face. He had no remorse at all. I was just basically like another woman growing up in the world who was a teenager at the time. And if you ain't doing this, you will. So the the demons that are hidden behind pimps and the low self-esteem and not knowing yourself and the insecurities hidden behind the women and the, the need and the search for love will have you going back in a repeated cycle and thinking that some of the things that you are told to do is love, you know? So I seen a lot of things that gave me a different perception on, is this what it's going to take for you to have the rich and fabulous and glitzy lifestyle? Really, I seen a lot of the time, the man, Little Tim's uncle enjoying the lifestyle. You didn't have to do anything. You rode around in her car sometimes, half of the time. You switched cars all the time. You were the one mainly in the house, like taking care of the bills and enjoying the lifestyle while the women was out long distance in other states taking these trips to sell their bodies to get the money to provide that lifestyle. I seen him one time whoop a bitch ass for real. Like, because she didn't have the money that he expected to get. The demons sometimes hidden behind the men that control a stable of women like that can be really dangerous. Especially when you try to hide the money or you try to make it seem like you didn't make no money. Like, he was the type of nigga that is going to do a shakedown. And that means all areas and secret locations that you think you got on your body is going to be checked. And one way or another, he's going to get his money. And over time, when you live that lifestyle, it can become very... uh violent because a lot of women think that they're being with someone that loves and care about them but when the money stops coming in or it's not a good day like it's supposed to and that nigga got habits or bills to pay the alter ego comes on and now you end up getting your ass beat every day or getting your ass beat when things ain't good versus when things is good when I tell you I seen it all I seen the bright side to it and I seen the dangerous side to it. I seen the the fights. I seen, you feel me, the the nights where the women would talk back to the man and the man, you feel me, wouldn't tolerate that. And he he whooping some ass. And you gonna get out on that straw and you gonna cover yourself up with some makeup or whatever and you gonna go make money regardless if you want to or not it's times where the women sometimes will get tired and they didn't want to go out there and work because again it slows up sometimes it was like over the course of me being there seeing a lot so it didn't start out in the hotels making five six hundred dollar days you know what i'm saying or or the clients that stick around long term they pay more some of the females, depending on what type of female you are, will go on the stroll. And when they go on the stroll and the money wasn't good, the gorilla came out. And I seen 
like a real nigga like get so vicious and turn up on multiple women just because the money wasn't right or it was slow. So that leaves a man to have to depend on maybe one or two females that he has that makes the most money for that day. Because a man with that mentality and living that lifestyle of being a pimp with a lot of money and continuous hoes in his stable, it's not a day where nobody's making no money. If it's a bad day like that, it's not a good day. Like, it's finna get real vicious and being the fact that he was a really smart man you never seen the anger and aggression come out until it was faced with a certain circumstance it was times where i would go with my god mom to certain places where she would bust dates and she would get back in the car and she would tell me uh she feel like she got AIDS and she's crying. And I, 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 I'm, I'm 16, 17. I don't know what to do. I don't even know what you want me to say. So I'm, I'm just going to let you just talk to me. And you feel me? You going to get it all out. And then who knows what's going to happen after this. If you're going to keep doing it. But nine times out of ten, again, when you love a man or somebody that you think you love. Who kind of like trapped you into... The profession, you go out and still do it. It was times where I would hide money for her. Ooh. It was times where I would go with her while she went and bust these dates. And I would sit in the car and we would call each other and make sure everything was cool. It was times where I would go to San Francisco while she would go to the massage parlor and I would just sit in the car and watch our car all night while I'm in there smoking weed, you feel me, drinking five-hour energy shots, you feel me, and just peep the whole scene. So I seen a lot of things that made me question the vulnerability of the woman. Like, she's not really getting treated like a queen. She's really getting treated and portrayed as if you are a queen, and I'm going to put you in this lifestyle if you do this for me. And if you don't do this for me, I already got you trapped in. So, therefore, you ain't going to go nowhere. I'm going to just beat your ass until you get it together. Because now my money is dependent on you. And the way these niggas is and the demons that they have, that money was something serious and well calculated. Meaning there is no times for backtracking and setbacks. Once you was in this, you was in this. The only way to really get out of it is if a nigga go to jail. But as times and, and the years started advancing, it started being like men would finesse the women into them thinking that he really liked them and want to be with him. And then later sooner or later it comes to the one date two date thing and then next thing you know she just a full-blown hoe and the moment <laughs> it's not funny but the moment she backtrack or the moment she don't do something that this man is asking her to do he didn't already got her thinking that he's her nigga and so but really she's just making money for him and so now once you do something that don't do something that he asks you to do it becomes violence in the picture it's the all mind manipulation game. And it was very strong back when I was like 16, 17, 18. Sacramento was the known capital for pimps, hoes, uh, from young little girls, from, from young ladies on up. Niggas want to act like they don't want to admit that. But yes, it was niggas out here who was pimping teenage girls and young ladies. And half of the time... It's not something that's put under the microscope because the men attract these teenagers and young ladies by them not knowing their self-worth, them not knowing who they are. And the man comes in buying them lavish gifts, you know, feeling their emotions, telling them nice things. Now, all of a sudden, you done got hooked into a line of prostitution and don't even know. And then the moment something don't go right, is when the girl or the teenager wants to back out and that's when it get real either violence 
or, you know, uh, forced to stay by mind manipulation, making you feel as if your self-worth is not capable to be able to survive on the streets without him. It was times where some of these people's, some of these ladies' clients, without a pimp, it could be very dangerous for some of these ladies. And some of these clients are just as dangerous. And they will rob and rape and hurt the ladies. So having a gorilla pimp like that, again, life goes up and down, in and out. So it was protection for them. But also, at the same time, let you fall short on your money. He was whooping your ass. But the ladies in that profession need a pimp, as they call it, to help you when another man tries to get aggressive with the woman. You get what I'm saying? It's really reckless in that line of work. I've seen, you feel me? Niggas get beat up, and I've seen women get beat up, too. To where I was like, God damn, it's real in these streets. It's really real. So it's an in and out to that game. Like, it ain't all glitz and glamour for the money. And I feel like majority, the bulk of the time, the women took the L's to, to live that lifestyle. But I think that... The lifestyle was good to them, especially if you're young and coming from a circumstance where you don't have a lot of money, but the the love that you may have felt, the same thing as getting involved in the gang. The only difference is you selling yourself to be involved in this corporation that makes you feel good. It's the same type of line of work. People, men and women, who don't know themselves get wrapped up into these gangs and organizations that make you feel as if you're loved. And at that point, it's kind of like a cult. You're going to do whatever the head honcho or the boss tells you to do because you have no self-worth of your own. They not going to never admit that, but I've seen a lot of young girls get pimped out. A lot. It's sad to say. But it's real. It was real life out here. When I was like 16, 17, 18 out here in sack. Like if you wasn't pimping and hoeing, you definitely wasn't doing nothing else. Pimping and hoeing, drinking, smoking weed, and everybody thought they was going to get rich. And the more that you can say you love somebody and get them emotionally invested, the easier it was for you to become the pimp. And, them, and for them to become the whole, especially if y'all was in a desperate situation. It was really serious out here. I seen the front and the back end of the game, and I wouldn't advise it for no women. And I also wouldn't advise it for no men either because a lot of the men was taking cases. This man did, I think, five years with the first case, 10 years with the other case, 10 years with the other case because... Some of these women were getting, you feel me, fed up and telling. Because he solely depended on that money. And the moment she did something, he wasn't coming in. And now that leaves for a man who's heavily involved in our lifestyles to be super aggressive. Especially if you have a track record of it. You're going to go to prison. And when you get out, you're going to have to start all over. Like, it's really real with some of these niggas out here. They don't see no other way. But now I'm starting to see in the world that that lifestyle and that way of living needs to change, especially for women. The more you hold yourself accountable and hold yourself in the position of power, you can grind and get your own bread and attract that energy money to you. You don't have to be out here selling yourself something that's sacred to a man because at some point he's going to feel like he has control over you and i don't think nobody wants that that lifestyle i seen a lot with my own two eyes and yes 50 percent of it was a nice lifestyle but a 50 percent of it was a lifestyle that i had to second guess like damn is that something you really want to do just to live 
a nice lifestyle and have a good appearance and have a good status. And nine times out of ten, it's for the men. It's not for the woman. She barely has time to even show off anything because she's too busy working. She's too busy managing the stable. I've seen fights between women because the, the, the main one would get jealous because the 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 dude has to deal with all the other ones like it's not a pretty lifestyle at all and the more i seen it the more i was like listen i'm about to go get me a job because at least i know if i just work for them you feel me <laughs> i can get a paycheck every week but because it's times where you may not make no money especially if you in a dry area and that man has to go and pick you up and take you to another location like, it's real out here. It's really serious in that day and age. It's 2023 now. I wouldn't advise it. I would hope that, you know, I'm only one person, but moms and dads are being in their children's life, especially young girls as a teenager, because it's real easy to not have value in yourself. And thinking you falling in love with someone who portrays this person and then all of a sudden once you're in you're stuck and now here comes the other side now you're liable to be controlled and do whatever another person a soul is asking you to do when only you should be in control of you so again that's Deidre with one shot game and that was just part two of the first video of the downside the police the females getting robbed, the females getting raped, like the men asking for sexual favors any and anywhere. Like it's real. It was serious back then. It was the real ultimate degradation of women in my eyes. And now it's time to change the narrative because without us, there will be no creator of life. That's Deidre with One Shot Game. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe.